welcome to the House of Muscle Tuning Show in association with Carcraft Magazine. In this multi-part miniseries, we'll be updating my 1972 Chevrolet Monte Carlo with the goal of creating a fantastic old-school freeway flyer. To do this, we'll be utilizing some parts from names like GM Performance, Holly, Gearstar Performance Transmission, Magnaflow, and more. So come along for the ride as we transform my old Monte into the ultimate old-school daily driver. Welcome to day three of our 72 Monte Carlo built on the House of Muscle. Now going into today, I did have some reservations, but I think we're gonna get through those. But there are three things we do have to get done today. One is our exhaust system. Two is the fuel injection. And three is we need to install a new drive shaft. I wanted to bring Brennan to talk a little bit about how we're kind of modifying the bracketry to make the old AC compressor and all the accessories work on the new motor. So what do we have to do? Because last night I was kind of freaking out because nothing fit. So what we kind of ran into with an issue with this, uh, the Vortex style motor has a different timing cover on it. So the OEM power steering pump bracket wasn't going to fit. Right. So what I did is I took a little chunk out of that last night just to see if I could make it fit and it looks like it's going to fit that way. As far as the air conditioning, we're going to have to get creative with some, some metal and see if we can make an upper bracket. We were able to find a lower bracket for the rear from Summit that we've got coming uh, today. How difficult is it to modify the bracketry? Because I look at this thing as, as somebody who's obviously not a fabricator. Do you just look at stuff and say, okay, well, I can just make that work if I cut this and shim that up or whatever the case is? It's only metal. It's only metal. Yeah, bend it to your will. And there you go. We'll make it work. Changing any part out from stock means you're now customizing a vehicle. And regardless of how well you plan or prepare, there will always be curveballs thrown at you. The key is not to get nervous, but instead identify the problem, find the solution, and then implement the fix. In the world of fuel injection and modification, you have to be smart enough to know what you don't know. Thankfully, I am in that position, which is why I'm friends with guys like Colin, guys like John, and guys like Ben. Now, in the case of the Holly Sniper Kit, they make it fairly simple. However, you have to look at things like this. These are directions. This is a diagram to show you how not to screw stuff up. Now, when you have a Colin, like I do, They'll teach you some stuff, but you still need to know these. Now, with that being said, I'm going to hand these to Colin, and he's going to walk you through a little bit of why this works. I'm going to leave now. I can't stress how easy it is to put this system in. It's literally eight connections. Before I go over that, I want to show you something now. I've got the instructions for the sniper. There's a quick start kit, which is this little guy here. There's a full instruction, which is this one here. But the most important one, wiring. This is a list of what to do and most importantly, what not to do. Super important. And again, like I said, eight connections and I'm gonna go over with them right now. We've got this little harness and it's the simplest thing in the world. You got power and ground, one, two right here. Fuel pump out goes to the electric fuel pump. And this one yellow wire goes to the HEI. Most people running a small block Chevy are probably gonna be running an HEI. And the pink wire, switch power, that's it. Once you've done that, you plug in the oxygen sensor, you plug in the coolant sensor, and you're ready to start the car. Right now, Colin is running the fuel lines for the EFI, and Ben is just about to start marking up the exhaust. This rubber fuel line that Holly supplies, it's basically up over the rear end. You can run it right along the frame rail and all the way up into the engine compartment. Everything is kind of out of sight, out of mind. It's nice. Anytime you're rebuilding a car, you want to always check for old wiring. So this is the main power wire, the one that powers the entire car. Now, as you can see, it is just old and brittle and just, it, it's done. And this is just because of age and heat. So when you come across this, just change them, 
give an example, as soon as I would uh, turn the blinkers on or step on the, uh, the brake pedal or anything like that, you would see all the dash lights dim. So this is definitely one of the reasons why. This long lead here is for the uh, oxygen sensor. This is the ignition out, which is uh, the main little plug there. This is for the auxiliary out. We won't be using that, but if you were to run an electric fan, a second electric fan, or AC clutch you want right. to disconnect, you could use that. So keep in mind, we're still using the original mechanical clutch fan setup, which is why we're not using that. And then this last lead is the one that goes to the little three and a half inch screen that can sit inside the car. Cool. And like I said, once you're done, you can't use that screen all the time. Once it's set up, it's done. Right out of there, first connection, coolant. Second, right over here, should be a little throttle position. Mm -hmm. Okay. This guy here, we need a pair of cutters. Every time he says cutters, I get nervous that he's gonna cut something off that we need. That's the feed for the O2 sensor. Mm, okay. So if you want to grab the O2 sensor, oh, yeah. and this is This is kind of cool, actually, guys. Holly also supplies you with this pretty cool kit, right? So this, you'll drill a little hole in the exhaust. Kind of screw in your bung here. And then they give you two clamps that you put right over it, like so, with a pad. Right? So you can get your O2 reading. Nice. Works out great. This is something that anybody at home with a drill bit can do. It's a piece of cake, there's no welding involved. Again, pretty simple. This is the supplied coolant sensor. It's kind of important, at least on a small block Chevrolet and small block Ford, the older kind of engines, not like a non-LS style engine. This coolant temp sensor tends to work best when it's in the very front of the engine where the water is coming out going to the radiator. So that's where we put it. What, what's gonna end up hanging out over here is going to be the relay for the fuel pump and the master fuse for the whole system. All of these wires are going to get cut down and they just go straight to the battery. Oh. That simple. The reason I, I brought it over here is because the high energy ignition is literally something like 45 to 65,000 volts. The voltage is so high that it emits electrical noise. You'd be able to pick it up in a mic or something like that. So I left that wire over here out of the way, away from that source of noise. Everybody's still hustling on this thing. We've been working all day. Um, there was stuff that we needed to get done that we simply didn't. The drive shaft didn't come back from the drive shaft shop. The exhaust is still sitting outside. We're trying to get the dipstick tube in. John's in the engine compartment. Fence under the car. Colin's just too big to be in the engine compartment. So, but it, it's coming together. Unfortunately, we are behind. But this is what happens when you build a project car. It turns into project after project after project. So, we are behind schedule. Um, we're going to keep working into the night. So, hopefully. Next time you see us, we'll be back on schedule and I'll have happier news, but for right now, we're just going to get back to work. Before you go, make sure to subscribe to the House of Muscle channel by clicking below, and we'll make sure you never miss a new episode of the House of Muscle.